Hi, my name is Vanessa van Dijk and in today's video I'm going to share with you what you can use before your retinol product. Now this is also a common question and therefore I also went ahead and prepared some examples which I want to share with you that are also beneficial to use before applying your retinol product. But at the same time I also do want to quickly go over what ingredients or skincare products in general I do not recommend using along with your retinol product because this combination may be a bit too strong and can lead to irritation. But let me get started with the benefits. What's actually good to also combine with your retinol product? What can you use beforehand to also um, make it suitable for your skin needs, for what you're looking for, what you also want to achieve? And so my first example is also pretty straightforward if you just want to keep it very like simple. And so the main focus that we also want to keep the focus on in the first example is also the cleanser. Since you can also go ahead, cleanse your face, apply your retinol and moisturizer. That's how simple you can do it. But it's important to also choose the right cleanser um, because some cleansers can also lead to irritations. So therefore I recommend looking for cleansers that are hydrating cleansers that are also gentle cleansers. Here are just a few examples so that you have an idea of what I mean by that. And please also make sure that those cleansers do not include high percentages of AHA or BHA, which are exfoliating acids, since this also can lead to skin irritation when also combining it with your retinol. Therefore, in that specific example, choosing a gentle cleanser is key to make sure that you're not going to irritate your skin. And what's also important is you don't have to use a cream cleanser. You can also go with a milk cleanser or with a foaming cleanser as long as it is suitable for your skin type, but still also a gentle one. And so once you're done with washing your face, you have rinsed off the cleanser, then also go ahead and take a towel and pat your skin dry. Once you have pat the skin dry, you can go ahead and also apply your retinol afterwards. And then if you like to, you can also go ahead and finish it off with your moisturizer. So that's one simple example where the main focus is on a gentle cleanser. Now with my other example that I want to share with you, again, you're always going to get started with step number one, which is washing your face with a gentle cleanser. But then once you're done with your gentle cleanser, go ahead and also you may want to include a toner into this. Now your toner is going to be your second step after you have cleansed your face. Look for toners that are hydrating toners, that are calming toners, that are soothing toners. Like they also do mention it already on the packaging if they are hydrating toners, soothing or calming toners. Those are the toners that you're going to look for. Please do not go ahead and look for toning solutions that include AHA or glycolic acid, lactic acid or BHA toners. Those are exfoliating toners. Those can irritate the skin to some point depending also on how your skin is going to respond to it. So therefore to keep it as beneficial as possible and also suitable and not irritating, look for hydrating and soothing toners. Now on one hand you have toners that are very beneficial that also can give back what the skin needs because some cleansers took away like most of your like natural oils and therefore also the skin can feel a bit more dry and irritating. So using a toner before you're applying your retinol can be beneficial. It can hydrate the skin, make it less um, irritating, has anti-inflammatory properties, but at the same time so some toners can also help you to increase um, basically the next product's absorption. Meaning that if you have, for example, a toner that also includes hyaluronic acid or similar ingredients that have the same function than hyaluronic acid, when using a product that includes hyaluronic acid before you're applying your retinol, it can help to also make sure that the retinol can sink into the skin much better and also faster. This can be very beneficial, don't get me wrong, it's actually a great combination. However, depending also on how your skin is going to respond to it, it can also lead to irritation because the retinol is going to sink into the skin too quickly as your skin can actually work with it. So therefore you also have to find, if you also want to include a toner, the right toner for your skin needs. If you're using toners that have anti-inflammatory properties, that have vitamins in it, those are actually great. But if you have toners similar to hyaluronic acid, those are great too. But be aware of that when the product is going to sink into the skin too quickly, it may lead to skin irritation 
where your skin needs to adjust to it basically that's all what it means but it still can be very beneficial so what you're going to do is use your gentle cleanser use your hydrating or soothing toner and once you're done with toner application you can also go ahead and apply your retinol afterwards and then again once again after your retinol you can also finish it off with a moisturizer now that's my second example for my third example, we want to keep the focus on serums. Now again, going to start off with step number one, washing your face with a gentle cleanser. If you want to include your toner, this would be your second step. You don't have to, then just skip it. And then we are going to look into um, serums. What serums can you use? What serums are actually beneficial to also use with retinol? Well, I have a few serums right here in front of me, such as, again, hyaluronic acid serums that can also help you to increase the hydration within your skin. But at the same time, again, be cautious because it also may um, lead to that the retinal product is going to sink into the skin too quickly. So therefore, if you are planning on it, try it out at first and then see how your skin is going to respond to it before you're going to use it also as often as you would use your retinol. So that's something that you have to try out. But it's not wrong. It's actually very beneficial to also combine it with your retinol product. Another beneficial uh, serum is also niacinamide. So if you have a niacinamide serum at home, you can also combine it and use it before your retinol product. What can niacinamide do for your skin? Well, it actually also can help you to also reduce the inflammation that retinol can also, for example, cause, such as also redness, or that you have the feeling of um, a little bit more of irritated skin, which retinol can do if your skin hasn't fully adjusted to it. And therefore, when also using niacinamide beforehand, it also can help to calm down the redness, to calm down your skin in general, so it looks less irritated, or that you are less likely to also see those irritations happening because niacinamide also works brilliantly with um, retinol together. So if you also want to look for a niacinamide or hyaluronic acid serum, those are also two ingredients that I can recommend that you can also use before applying your retinol. So again, what would this routine look like? Well, start off with a gentle cleanser. If you want to include a toner, that would be your second step. Then either use your hyaluronic acid and or niacinamide serum in that specific routine and then apply your retinol product on top and then finish it off with a moisturizer. So that's another routine that I can share with you, which is also very beneficial. Now, another routine that I want to share with you is also a routine that if you're looking for um, achieving less irritation. So the routines that, I'm ha that I just currently have shared with you, except the first one, which is a very simple and straightforward one, but when also including your toner or another serum into your routine, um, you may um, this may already work brilliantly for you, or you may also uh, need a bit more time until your skin has gotten used to retinol itself before you're going to include a toner or serum into your skincare routine as well. So if you are being new to it, for example, and you also want to reduce the likelihood of experiencing irritation, what you also can do is, first of all, again, start off with washing your face with a gentle cleanser, pat your skin dry, and then use any of the moisturizers beforehand, such as moisturizers that include dimethicone, like basically silicone, or moisturizers that include petrolatum, or also moisturizers that include shea butter. Those are ingredients that are heavier ingredients, that are greasier ingredients, and therefore can also protect your skin. It acts a little bit, little bit more like a barrier, meaning that after you have washed your face with your cleanser and you're going to apply your moisturizer beforehand, and then apply your retinol on top of it, the retinol won't sink in as quickly into the skin as without using your moisturizer beforehand. Why is this beneficial? Well, if you can see that if you're going to apply your retinol um, after cleanser on top of your skin and you can see, well, um, it's a bit irritating. How can I uh, achieve better results with it? How can I di kind of like dilute it so that it also will give me less irritation so that I have the I can build up the skin tolerance for it. Well, one way is use your moisturizer before you're applying your retinol. This way, the moisturizer acts like a barrier. You have already a barrier on top of your skin, then you're applying your retinol on top, and it's going to slowly penetrate into the skin, meaning your skin has uh, isn't as overwhelmed with the retinol ingredient itself, and therefore can work better with it, and also um, will have uh, also less likelihood of getting an irritation. So using your moisturizer beforehand is also a great way. 
Now another way on what you can do is also basically use all the other products like your uh, cleanser, toner and serum and moisturizer beforehand and then use your retinol on top. So if you are now saying, well I wanted to include a toner, I also want to include a serum, um, but I'm a little bit scared of if it can increase the uh, hydrate, if it can also increase the absor absorption of my retinol, what can I do to also still use those products but also have less, like the less likelihood of getting an irritation? Well, another method is you can go ahead, start off with a gentle cleanser, apply your toner if you'd like to include one. If you also want to go for a hydrating serum or niacinamide, use that one beforehand as well. Then go ahead and use your moisturizer before. And then lastly, apply your retinol on top. This way you still have the products, uh, you have used the products before, beforehand that you still also want to include. That also can help you with hydration and inflammation but you can also still use your retinol on top of it and it still will slowly penetrate into the skin because you have used your moisturizer beforehand but you still were able to also include your toner and serum in, like, as well as into that routine. So that's also a way on how you can do this. Now there was uh, several examples. Those are just ideas that I want to share with you so that you also have an understanding of how you can also set up your routine, what you can also use beforehand so that it also will um, basically be adjustable for your skin needs since everyone has also different preferences, everyone has different benefits or like um, concerns that they also want to improve. So therefore those are like that specific examples. Now I also do want to quickly emphasize what I generally speaking do not recommend using before applying your retinol since those um, ingredients specifically can be a bit too strong and therefore can also lead to skin irritation. This doesn't mean that it won't work. It just means that you have to be aware of those ingredients and I recommend using it either in your morning skincare routine instead of in your evening skincare routine when using your retinol or also use it on alternate days when not using your retinol. And those also include, for example, exfoliating acids, or like the ordinary one is a toning solution still. It also exfoliates your skin because it includes glycolic acid, which is an AHA. Then you also have, for example, lactic acids. Same thing, it exfoliates your skin, it is an AHA. Or also, for example, Polar's Choice BHA, which is salicylic acid. Those specific ingredients can help you to um, exfoliate your skin. There's nothing wrong with it. It can work when also using it before your retinol, but for that you really have to also have the tolerance for it to tolerate. Otherwise, if, you are, if your skin isn't ready for that specific stage of combination, it can lead to severe irritation and therefore, I generally speaking, do not recommend it. It may work if you have very resistant skin, if you have already to build up the skin tolerance of your retinol and you can use it daily without any issues, then you may want to step into that combination as well. But I do not recommend it if you're being new to it and you're still getting some irritation just by using your retinol. So please be aware of those products, um, I generally speaking do not recommend it using, using them in the same routine. But you can use them on alternate days, you can also use it in your morning routine for example. Then also other ingredients that I generally do not recommend is for example uh, vitamin C like ascorbic acid as well as azelaic acid. Since those two when also using it in the same routine than your retinol it can lead to skin irritation because the combination of those two products can be a bit too strong for your skin to tolerate. Again, they do not have any conflicts with retinol. It's more about what your skin is able to handle. If your skin isn't able to handle a specific combination, it also will show it to you um, by irritation, such as redness, or if you're feeling a stinging or burning or like intensive, like flaking and dryness. If that's going to happen, then please do not combine those products. That's what I basically want to share with you. Retinol itself does not really have any conflicts with other skincare ingredients. Ingredients. So technically you could also go ahead and use any other skincare products in the same routine when using your retinol. But it's more about what your skin can handle and also um, what may be more beneficial to combine and what's also a bit more beneficial to use in a different routine. 
because it's not wrong to have a different AM routine than your PM routine. If you have certain com like concerns, then it can actually be beneficial to also separate them and still get the benefits of those ingredients. The only conflict that retinol has is please do not use multiple retinol or retinol its products in the same routine. What do I mean by that? Well, for example, please do not go ahead and use the ordinary retinol and Paula's Choice retinol treatment in the same routine or any other retinol products or retinoids that you have at home. Please do not use them in the same routine because then you're going to increase the strength of your retinol and again, it can lead to irritation. But other than that, those are basically the examples that I want to share with you. Those are also the examples of skincare ingredients that you have to be aware of since the combination can be quite strong and also lead to irritation. As well as also, you have to have a bit of an understanding of what your skin can tolerate. Some people with resistant skin can tolerate and handle certain ingredients and combinations a bit better than someone with dry, sensitive skin. And based on that, you have adjusted. And you can also find this out by slowly also adjusting it to um, how your skin is going to respond to it. And by that, you're going to start off with the gentlest. And then you may maybe also in the future experiment with something else. But I do not recommend it at the very beginning when being new to it. And so this is also what I wanted to share with you and also what I wanted to teach you um, with what you can, for example, come up and also use before you're applying your retinol. If you also want to see an actual application and also routine of how you can use your retinol product, I have a video for you at the end of this video so that you also can see the actual application on my face as well, that you also can see it visually. But with that, this is also where I also want to end this video. And I do also hope with that information, you find it helpful. And if you like this video, please also don't forget to give it a thumbs up as well as share it. And thank you so much for watching. And I will see you soon in the next one. Happy skin caring. Bye.